what we focus on here at Meraki is more on the demo on the data side. So today we're going to look at the um, MV update, which is the first uh, item on the presentation, um, and then we'll swap over and move over to a demonstration. So MV cameras, our first generation MV cameras are the MV21s and MV71s. Um, the outdoor camera, uh, obviously a larger form factor, and also um, obviously more robust, IP66 and IK10. That was our first edition, um, and the market received them very well. Moving on from that, um, we moved into uh, more of the analytics and smart cameras, and that was the MV12N, which launched earlier last year, uh, MV12WE and MV12W. N is for narrow. Uh, w E means wide angle E, um, and W is just wide angle. Okay. Now, the memory that these cameras house are 256 gigabytes. Um, you do have the W E, which is 128 gigabytes, um, but that E is for economy, um, and we understand that some uh, customers don't require that much memory. Uh, because it is quite efficient in the way that it manages its memory, um, you may be able to get away with 128 gigabyte. But the recommendation is, is to go with 256 gigabyte. Uh, the new MV12s are 1080p, 4 megapixel, and uh, they can uh, rotate up to 73 degrees horizontal, or on the wide angle, 114 degrees is the field of vision. So today's major features uh, that we had uh, in our portfolio was end-to-end -end encryption. Um, so we run over 250 bits worth of encryption, category five. Uh, motion heat maps uh, for person detection and motion-based retention, motion alerts, wireless, and audio. Um, why these are important, we'll go through that. It's all nice and well to have features, but if you don't know how to use them and you don't know how to employ them for your benefit, uh, then they really just the feature. Biggest objections we used to get with the MV21s and 71s um, were you know, the quality element, 720p, 128 gigabyte, not being enough storage, no wireless, no cloud storage or backup, and no voice recording. So we went away and we developed our second generation, um, MV22 and MV72. So these, uh, the two stands for second generation. So these are, these are brand new cameras, you can see that they um, in terms of their form factor as well as their design. They're far easier on the eye. They don't look like a traditional dome camera. Um, and with this design, we've also packed in all of the wireless antennas, especially if you think that the MV72 is mostly all um, alloy. Uh, you find that placing antennas becomes a bit of a tricky situation. So we've had to spend a lot of time in design. They're both very focal um, and they're both four megapixel 1080p. The features that come with these um, and the speciality features that we've placed on them is um, obviously that they are wireless um, and they do voice recording, but mainly we've now added the addition of cloud storage, um, which we'll show you in the dashboard as well today. What do customers want? Uh, so we focus on solving problems with customers, not just building features. They want easy access. They want to be able to view footage remotely. Uh, they would like to take action or be alerted to any events, and they would like to see some more analytics because the video data is very rich, and the data underlying that or the data points can be used in far more efficient ways. Um, for example, if you would like to know how many people are in a particular location at once, um, or if somebody has entered the building, or if an incident has occurred outside of normal operating hours, um, to the point where you would normally uh, prefer there to be a certain amount of people, either staff or employee related, and you are alerted when there isn't. Access control integration, uh, so password administration um, gives the ability for you to segregate your network and your walls, um, your video walls, so that you may have distributed branches where they have local access to their own video and at HQ you have access to all of the video. An optional add-on license for users um, who have non-negotiable requirements on 
um, storage, so they would like a, li a longer storage period, um, is that you have cloud backup, and this is a per camera license. The data is stored in Microsoft Azure, and we have three data regions, which is um, North America, the EU, and Asia. <clears throat> it works with all of our cameras, um, and then obviously what you have to consider um, is a bandwidth requirement to enable to do that uh, cloud storage. So it dual records on camera as well as on the cloud, and then from there you are able to export 24 hours at a time if you need to save it um, to offline storage. What we have to do from this point um, is uh, log on to a dashboard that contains uh, cameras, and we'll go down here to the physical security. Uh, we are obviously um, also equipped with uh, Meraki MV cameras in our offices, um, and I'm going to go into our video wall to start off with. So I'm sure questions will pop up um, as we go along in this demo, um, so please, if you post them in the chat field, I'll be happy to answer them for you. <clears throat> so first thing we'll notice is we can go to our cameras. We'll give us a list of cameras, how many are up, how many are dormant, and how many may have uh, offline alerting on them. So we can see that these two are offline. That gives you a quick overview um, of whether the camera is connected or not, or whether there's an issue with connectivity. Um, Cloud Archive is not enabled on them, and we've also added a load of tags here, which is for easy identification. So an example of that is if I wanted to go see how many of those cameras are Cloud Archive, um, I can bring those cameras up immediately. Or if I wanted to go see how many of those cameras are on the staircases, <clears throat> then I can just simply type in stair, and that will pick up stairwells um, in our Cisco San Francisco office. So I'm sitting in London. These cameras are in San Francisco, so this points as well to the accessibility. It uh, allows you to um, access the cameras from anywhere in the world as long as you are authorized, um, and it gives you the ability to view critical information, public IP, local IP, um, the Ethernet cable that it's connected to, and you can add some more information here if you wish, um, including firmware versions. Uh, because your firmware is pushed to the dashboard, you can deploy that at the time of your choosing. Um, you then have the ability to go have a look there and see. Make sure that all the cameras are up to date, and the reason I would suggest always looking at that is because we release new features um, which allow you more functionality as time goes on. Um, and keeping that up to date gives you access to that. And that's all included in the license. So we're going to click on the stairwell here, and we're just going to take you through the stairwell camera. Now, this is on the third floor um, in San Francisco. Currently, local time is 5.10 a.m. in the morning. Um, you can see that this camera is not enabled with cloud storage because it only has the green bar. It will have a blue bar underneath the green bar on the timeline should be having should it have dual recording enabled. So we're going to go and just do a simple search yesterday noon. And that will take us to yesterday noon, which is lunchtime. Today's Thanksgiving, um, therefore there will be nobody else in the, in the building. Whilst it goes to yesterday noon, I'll select that it needs to detect people and you'll very quickly see that yellow frames pop around people and it starts counting them. As it picks them up, and because of the clarity of the camera, I can pause that and I can screen grab this particular frame. You'll see it downloads on the left-hand side of my screen. I can open that up. I also have dynamic zoom within the field of view, so if I press play, I can go and zoom in on those, but let's just pick up this uh, screen grab, and again, should we have an identifiable face here, we can then ping that out to um, the necessary people who need to take action, make sure these people are authorized. We're going to go to analytics, it gives us an idea of um, the traffic on the stairs, so we're going to put one day there. This gives us um, most utilized day, which is November 15th on Thursday, estimated peak occupancy. Normally we only find that two people at a time are on these stairs. Total entrance is 5794. Why would that be important, estimated peak occupancy? Well, let's talk about injuries um, at the workplace. Uh, should it be that 
um, an injury took place and it was said that the staircase was too busy and it was too unsafe, at least you have evidence then to show that it is um, not overpopulated on the staircase or occupied um, and therefore um, you know, that safety concern is not valid. Uh, network, this gives you a full connectivity bar. It allows you to see um, exactly uh, whether there's been any interruptions in connectivity, and it also allows you to see which port of the switch that access point is connected, or that uh, camera is connected to, and also which switch. Location, you can set the location, map, photos, topology. That's good for remote management. You have a picture in there, you have your full event log and settings. Now settings is the most important part because uh, this is where you go and finesse either the quality of the camera, whether you wish it to be on night mode or not, um, or dynamic, motion alerting, which you set up, wireless zones and sense. And we'll just go through them very quickly. Quality and retention. You can see that this camera's onboard storage retains footage for seven days. What that means is this camera is obviously recording for seven uh, at all times, um, not as a schedule. It's not as scheduled. Motion based retention is off. And if I click yes, you immediately see an increase in estimated retention. So, what is uh, motion based retention? Motion based retention is the ability for you to delete static footage, which is footage without any movement in it, every three days or at a time of your choosing. So, if I put more information, it brings up this little chart here, which gives you a rundown of the traffic and estimated. Uh, traffic based on 60 days, 90 days, enhanced quality, and 1080p quality. So quite interesting in that respect, something to read up on. Or you can put it on when should the camera delete footage, when the footage is older than 24 hours, or when it is older than five days, or when it runs out of storage space. So let's bring the quality down, and immediately if we say 1080p with standard, enhanced or high quality, you can see that the estimated days. So you can play around with this even at 720p or 1080p standard. Um, you have a very good quality picture. Um, when do we tend to view footage um, at a very high def? Uh, quality is normally on a site where you're running the video over your LAN. Yes, that's right. When you're on site, the video runs over your LAN. When you are remote, it will obviously stream, and that's to a mobile device, laptop, any computer, as long as you've got access to your authorized night mode. Very simple to understand what night mode is. Um, nothing new, but it is available as a feature. Motion alerting. Quite nice to know that um, should there be areas of concern within the environment that you need to highlight, uh, we can also say, when would the camera send me a motion alert? We'll say always. And if anything is longer than three seconds. Now, this could be an entrance. There's normally a fire exit that is not normally used for entering the building. We enable it, and it might be at the bottom of these stairs, so we will select this area. Anytime there's movement within this area, we will see an email come through to our alert page, um, and that also could be to a group of individuals that is uh, responsible for the security of the building. This is also very good um, for knowing whether there are still people within a building, if there should be a fire uh, alarm, um, and that, again, is important for uh, safety. Wireless. We decided to do wireless, um, not just on the basis that uh, it's convenient, um, but also on the basis that some customers may have existing cabling in an architecture. They wouldn't want to go remove coaxial cables to put Meraki cameras in there um, and run CAT6 cables or RJ45s. So we provide a converter, a little pebble that converts the power from coaxial low power to PoE, and then you run all of the cameras over wireless. Zones is a brand new feature that we released, and as I just mentioned, your license and your firmware, as you update those, you will get these features um, released to you. and the the way you use zones is very much in drawing these zones within the picture or within the field of vision, and it allows you to count um, specific events within each column. 
So let's say, for instance, that um, we wanted to measure the traffic on these stairs. What we would do is, is we draw three columns, and it will tell us, um, or there were three doors, it would tell us exactly how many people at any one time uh, within these columns. So you're able now to divide a, uh, a video feed uh, into three and get an interesting perspective as to how busy that particular environment is. And then last column is sense. Um, so if we enable sense, we'll discuss that uh, in the presentation. It allows you um, to pull some API data um, with MQTT um, data. And it's a very simple messaging service. I can add that in. I can add a edit uh, the broker. And yeah, I can put in exactly what I need. So new MQ broker, host port security, non-TLS. Very easy to set up. And we'll head back to video. In a traditional sense, if I just wanted to go see between the hours of, say, 5 um, in the morning and 9, I wanted to see if anybody has been in this area. I can use motion search. I can select this area, and I can see that it brings up results for moving uh, elements within that video. And why is this important? Well, you don't want to be looking at static footage all the time. Um, it takes an awful lot of time and resources to review video, thereby the industry standard is, is that almost 94% of video is not viewed, and therefore we are focusing as a business on analytics and data points um, that tell you proactively what's going on, rather than having to sit and stare at a screen all day long. Uh, that is the end of